one. Welcome, welcome into the Cyber Sanctuary study room. It's noonday prayer Bible study. Bible study, of course, will start now and at the one o'clock hour, we will continue to meet around the throne of grace in prayer as we've been doing since November. Yes, kudos, accolades, praises, thanks. I really appreciate how you have stood by us as we have sought the face of the Lord together. If my people, you already know, you already know, but look, we are going to continue meeting in the cyber sanctuary for our Bible study. We're going to continue our prayer lines indeed. We don't do that even in the summer. Listen, does God bless us in the summer? And it is no problem. If you can't make every one of them, okay, so you only make nine out of ten. <laughs> We're grateful for that. Or whatever you make, it's really up to you. But I'm sure you can join in with this. When prayers touch the throne room and kiss the face of God, God smiles and God answers prayer. I want to begin another study since we're going to be talking about this subject, God willing, uh, probably will take two weeks to get through it, but that's all right. Uh, we're going to be observing a Memorial Day message. I encourage you, invite your friends going into the church to do this. And yes, we are not completely open, do not completely have all of the staff in place. And it is a work in process and thank God in progress. Bear with me just for 30 seconds more. I want to express thanks to the team of worship warriors. I'm tempted to call some names, but some of you already know that we have a few superstars on the team, playmakers, who I don't know how they do what they do, but I sure thank God that I'm a part of the effort and they are doing much of the heavy lifting. So here we are again behind the camera. Thank God for each and every one of you. And believe it or not, I still have this sort of weird kind of thing going on to some people who are doubters and non-believers, where it is as though I sense not only God's presence, but the presence of God's people. That's right. So the New Day Prayer, May 19, 2021, part one. We're going to talk about crossing over into the promised land or the land of promise. Hear the reading of the word of God. Joshua chapter 3. I want to read verse 2 through 13. I'm reading from the message translation. After three days, leaders went through the camp and gave out the orders to the people. When you see the covenant chest of God, your God, carried by the Levitical priest, start moving. Follow it. Make sure that you keep your proper distance between you and it, about a half a mile. Be sure now to keep your distance, and you'll clearly see the route to take. You've never been on this road before. Hmm. Verse 5. Then Joshua addressed the people, sanctify yourselves. Tomorrow God will work. Miracle wonders among you. Joshua instructed the priests, take up the chest of the covenant and step out before the people. So they took it up and processed before the people. God said to Joshua, God said to, jo God said to Joshua, Take this very day, I will begin to make you great in the eyes of all Israel. They will see for themselves that I am with you in the same way that I was with Moses. You will command the priests who are to carry the chest of the covenant. When you come to the edge of Jordan's waters, stand there on the riverbank. 
Then Joshua addressed the people of Israel. Attention! Listen to what God, your God, has to say. This is how you will know that God is alive among you. God will completely dispossess before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gergeshites, Amorites, Jebusites. Seem like ought to be adding termites. <laughs> Look at what is before you, the chest of the covenant. Think of it. The master of the entire earth is crossing the Jordan as you watch. Now take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one man from each tribe. When the soles of the feet of the priest carrying the crest, the chest of God, master of all the earth, touch the Jordan waters, the flow of water will be stopped. The water coming from upstream will pile up in a heap. The only way to cross the Jordan River and enter the promised land is by faith. If we've gotten into this word, it is imperative for us to understand the only way we cross Jordan's River translation, a kind of L-I-F-E, life, successfully, it is going to require faith. The only way to cross the Jordan River and to enter the promised land, the land of promise, is by faith. Faith was and is the way to conquer the problems of life. Don't give up on that. You can't come up with some other way. The obstacles that stand between us and the promised land, they are too numerous. They will overwhelm you. The promised land is the inheritance of every genuine believer. But only, the only, only way to secure our inheritance is by faith. Money can't buy it. All kinds of political machinations and imaginations and who do it, who says, whatever else you want to throw in the pot. No, no. The only way to secure the inheritance is by faith. How were the Israelites to cross over the flooding Jordan River? It's a good question. Standing there by the river, the people were bound to be questioning what Joshua and their leaders would, could do. What can you do? What would you do? What is possible? Building enough rafts to transport three million people, livestock, tents, furnishing, supplies, that's a total impossibility. Down deep within their hearts, many of the people were bound to be praying for God to make a way for them to cross the river. Remember when that was a notable thing? Back in the day when we were marching, when we were shutting down systems and overturning unjust edicts and rulings, even leading up to getting by the grace of God rights and privileges in this country that had long been the dreams of our forebears. What was the methodology employed if my people call? Oh my God, don't you ask me out loud who do I really believe the people of God really are and what were they like? I'll tell you. And some of you will probably have to run for cover because it may shock you. But all that is happening in our world today, today's globe is inhabited by the people of God. And many of God's people are out of step with God, out of touch with God, thinking that the solutions are more bombs, more firepower. Some, the Old Testament teaches they trust in chariots. Some trust in their mighty moving, marching band of warriors. Whoa! But believers, 
We do not disavow the need of technology. No, indeed. We do not act as if we are against scientists and science. No, indeed. But at the end of all of it, we're able to say we trust in God. Wherever, whatever, whenever, however the situations may occur. Don't you stop believing. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in it. Let me get back. Otherwise, what I think may be two will end up being three. Sorry about that, but my soul just gets a little happy and I can't do it always on cue. The Holy Ghost is large and in charge. What must have they, they, they had to pray. God, how is it? We can't do it without you. Make a way for us to cross the river. What happened next shows the importance of faith in God when problems are faced throughout life. In this passage, five, one, two, three, four, five, five instructions, different instructions are given by Joshua, his officers and God. Five different instructions challenging everyone to have faith, to trust God. By faith, God would provide the way across over the Jordan. By faith, God would show how to overcome the problem and obstacles of the Jordan. By faith, God would make sure God's people would receive the promised inheritance, the victorious life of the promised land. Let's take note of the five different sets of instructions challenging everyone to have faith, to trust God. First, there were the instructions of the officers to the people. That's Joshua chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. They instructed the people to follow the ark. Remember now, the ark, the chest of God, the ark, the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's presence, a symbol of God's holy throne. Whenever the people saw the priest pick up the Ark and began to courageously march forth into the Jordan River, the people were to move out and follow the Ark into, guess this, the riverbed. Did you hear what I said? They were to follow. Now, we haven't gotten to the splendor of the New Testament's example of Peter walking on water. This is way back. But they were to follow the chest of God, the Ark of the Covenant, into the riverbed. Translation, where God leads you got it. Songwriter says, I will follow where he leads. I will follow. I'll go with him. With him. You know it all the way. They were to believe and trust the power of God. However, the officers commanded the people to keep about uh, a thousand yards from the ark. In other words, don't get it twisted. You don't roll up on God's symbolic presence. You don't roll up on God's symbolic throne and go like, hey, yo, what's going on, God? You know, hook a brother up. No, it doesn't work like that. There is reverence. There is respect. Don't you remember when grandma would take her pocketbook and squat you if you were leaning and laying all over the communion table playing around? It was reverence and respect. It wasn't that the table was going to disappear because you leaned on it. It wasn't that the church was going to explode. It was a thing of teaching us that there is a holy reverence. When we come into the presence of God, we humble ourselves. We worship God. This was a picture of their showing reverence. They're a thousand yards now. Showing reverence for God. Note that the officers emphasize this command. In fact, 
They warned the people not to go anywhere near the ark. There were the instructions of Joshua to the people. This indeed is Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Joshua ordered the people to sanctify, consecrate, purify themselves. This meant that the people were to prepare their hearts before the Lord. They were to pray, to confess, to repent, to rededicate, recommit their lives to God. By the way, as hope is looming larger on the horizon, we're mindful of what's going on in India. It pleased me to hear that at least, I think the number was 80 million doses of the vaccine was being sent from these United States of America around the world to other countries challenged to receive the vaccines. Listen, I, I know we we are some needy and greedy folk. We got that. But when you are dealing with a worldwide phenomenon, don't miss the opportunity to understand that this is a call for us to unite one world. Kind of reminds me back a few years ago Will Smith was in a movie. I think the title of it was Independence Day. We were being invaded from uh, yonder's world by aliens, etc., etc., and all of this. And people look to this country to give leadership. And all around the globe, all of a sudden, they started to come together to have a united front. Well, that's just Hollywood's rendition of the actual thing that in order for us to get out of this, we're going to have to understand the necessity of coming together. And if we ought to lead in anything, and especially the churches to give any kind of contribution to it, we need to follow the command given here. We are to pray, confess, repent, rededicate, and recommit our lives to God. This was to be symbolized by the outward acts of bathing and changing clothes. We don't go to oil. I hope you still bathe and change clothes. Hey, excuse me. You know, y'all, I just can't help it every now and then. <laughs> Nonetheless, they were also to show forth of their sincerity by abstaining from stuff that you know we ain't likely to do. And some of us, come on, can I lean into it and be real? honest with you without you getting mad well if you do that's on you boo but look then they were even to abstain from sexual intimacy so that they could devote full attention to the lord you read exodus 19 10 you ain't got to take my word for it read exodus chapter 19 verse 10 and then 14 and 15 read in the new testament first corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 through 6 there is a time when all of your attention is to be upon the law. I got a joke rattling in the back of my head, but I'm going to save that for another day. Thirdly, <laughs> there were the instructions of Joshua to the priests or the ministers. Joshua, the sixth verse of that third chapter. This was a challenge for the priests to be strong in faith, to believe enough. Take up the ark and move out ahead of the people. They were to courageously lead the people into the swift, dangerous currents of the flooding river. Number four, there were the instructions of God to Joshua, verses seven and eight of that third chapter. Joshua needed to learn that God was with him, even as God was. And God had been with Moses. Through the miraculous events about to take place, Joshua would be lifted up, praised, exalted in the eyes of the Israelites. The people would know that he was really chosen by God and that he truly followed the trusted God and trusted God indeed, Joshua did. They would know that God was with him even 
as God had been with Moses. As a result of the miracle about to take place, the people could highly esteem Joshua and follow his leadership. God also instructed Joshua to command the priests to march the ark into the swift and dangerous currents of the flooding river. Verse 8 of the third chapter. Just picture, if you will, swift and perilous currents, flooding river. Imagine what God was asking Joshua to do. Strong, strong faith was needed to give such a command. Can you see the drama unfolding? My goodness, that drama must have been, come here. Let me see if I can allow these scenes to flash across your mind. Look at all of the people gathered up, puzzled, the elders needing some assistance because the weight of the years and the burden of time had gotten them, but it wasn't very many of them in this crowd because this is now time for a new generation to understand and to learn that God is God. And besides God, if you're not trusting God, Yahweh, in the Old Testament, your trust is misplaced. You misdiagnosed the propensity of your problem and solutions are not going to occur. There they are, children running and playing, not even aware of the dangerous threat now looming large. They're there with their livestock everything they have and now you're saying what if it doesn't work is literally like committing suicide but they have the faith to follow god and the leader that god i'm not talking about this jag talking Stuff that people do now, hustling folk can send this and you'll get that and do this and you'll do that and they give you a word and you get all excited with the word of God and then they hit you with the great big hooks right in your what? No, no. Follow the example of this leader who has to demonstrate strong faith because he's not sending you. He is going himself hallelujah to the lamb of god that's one of the reasons why i think it's criminal if you're going to preach to tithe then tithe yourself that's just an example oh, got your attention on that one didn't it <laughs> nonetheless when we look at this drama what were the thoughts flashing through joshua's mind was his faith weak or strong the drama of this entire event is indeed climatic. And number five, there were the instructions of Joshua to the people. This is verse nine through 13 of the third chapter. Joshua declared the word of the Lord, the assurance of God's promise. God would provide the way to cross over the surging, raging currents of the flooding Jordan. God would enable there's people to conquer the problem and cross over to secure their inheritance. My brothers, my sisters, I'm going to leave you right there. If you go back through those verses, we are poised now for the next steps. We're going to have to deal with next week. They're crossing over and the instructions while in the midst. Oh, hallelujah. Of what they're dealing with. There are times when you receive instructions, when you're on one side, you got to move out. But then when you're on the move, God will lead you and instruct, inform you for other things. Now let me skip to the New Testament. I'm not going to quote the scripture, but you can Google it, fact check it. I know it's there. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Most of us, at least I know I've certainly been guilty of it, but many of us, we want to rewrite that scripture, these signs shall follow, and we want it to read like this. 
This is the sign that you got to wait to see that's going to go before you and then you take action. But baby, God, let me tell you, am I right about it? God does not work like we dictate or think or that God should be ordered by us. These signs shall follow them that believe. There comes a time when you and I have to step out. And as we step out in faith, believing God, having good wits, I ain't talking about this crazy stuff. No, no. Believing God as we journey. God you move closer, God will give you instructions when you get to a certain point. This and I'm done. Kind of reminds me in the land navigation courses back in the day, in the woods there, on, well, it's a large post, and maybe they'll rename it one day, but anyway, Fort Bragg. And as such, <laughs> Fort Bragg with all of its spines and its dusty, dusty, dusty red, clay dirt hills, etc. You're trying to find your objectives in land nav course. Listen, you understood that you had to make sure that the route of travel, you had the right course plotted and charted. You get to point one, awaiting you at point one would be further instructions for where you find your next target. When you get to two, only there would you find the next three. If you miss one, you ain't likely to ever get to three. If you miss two, you ain't gonna make it to four. Let alone four, you ain't gonna even get to three. All I'm trying to say is that there are times when we too will be challenged to examine what is the condition of our faith. Do we really believe or not? And I'm not going to tell you that there won't be times that your teeth may grind and chatter or your knees may not. But when we make the steps to follow God after all this praying about order our steps in your word. When we trust God and follow God, when we move, God has a way of leading, guiding, and directing. Whatever thy way, I think it's appropriate for the new generation, another generation, and the old heads like me to retool ourselves that all, all spiritual have thine own way. You know that hymn, have thine own way, Lord. Thou art, am I right about it? Thou art the potter, we are the clay. Look, hope I didn't keep you too long. Make sure that you have time to take care of your necessary business. Be listening for your voice in a few minutes. God bless you. And no, this is not what you may think it is in other traditions. For me, it's a celebration of you, a salute to you, and at the same time, thanksgiving to God for the privilege of serving you precious, beautiful people of God. Amen.